And let us pray. O Lord, we pray that you come in the abundant power of your Holy Spirit. Open our eyes that we would see Jesus. Open our ears that we would hear his voice. And open our hearts that we would receive him into our lives. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to read together from the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning at verse 12. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. For it is time for judgment to begin with God's household, and if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Over the last number of weeks, we've been working our way together through the book of First Peter. And in particular, the last few, few weeks, we've thought about what it means to suffer as a Christian. How we can relieve the sufferings of others. How we can suffer in our own ways as well. And Peter continues that theme today as we continue to look at the Living series that we've been following over the last few weeks. And today I want us to think about living with faith while suffering. Living with faith while suffering. Suffering comes upon us all, and we've thought about that over the last few weeks. But what about suffering with a faith-filled life? Well, there's four things in this passage I want us to think about this morning. The Christian church, the believer, is not exempt from suffering. We know that, and we've thought about that. All of us suffer in different ways. And so what does Peter say to us about this? Well, today he's thinking particularly about suffering because of our faith, suffering because we are Christians. We asked the question a few weeks ago that if each of us was placed on trial for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict us? Would there be enough evidence to find me and to find you guilty of being a Christian? Well, when the answer is yes, there is enough evidence, then Peter says there's four things that we need to keep in mind. The first thing is in verse 12 of this passage. He says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. Peter is saying to us that we shouldn't be surprised that we suffer because of our faith. You see, our faith in some ways is countercultural to the world around us. We are called to be different, and when we're different, we stand out amongst the crowd, and so therefore become easy targets for people to pick upon, for people to point the finger at. And so Peter is saying, don't be surprised when you suffer because you're a Christian. Because we are different, and are called to live different lives, and to say that some things are wrong when the world says that they're okay, to try and live our lives according to the word of God whenever we live in a multicultural society that might want to pull us in opposite directions, then we could easily become targets. And Peter says, don't be surprised at that. But Jesus also speaks into this, and Peter, in a way, through this passage, is echoing the words of Jesus. Because Jesus tells us in, in John chapter 15, verse 18, Jesus says this, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, 
you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. So Jesus is saying the world hated him, so then therefore why would it not hate us? And Peter is echoing those words. So he's saying when you become a Christian, don't be surprised if trials come. Don't be surprised if there's suffering in your life at different times. Take, for example, sickness. We might suffer because we're ill or our family or friend is ill. That is suffering. And the world, right across the world, everybody at some stage in their lives suffers from that. But as Christians... We are different because we have God with us. When we suffer through the bereavement of a loved one, we suffer, we hurt, it's still sore within us. But we know we're not alone because we don't suffer as those without hope. So when we suffer for being a Christian because the world causes us to suffer, we shouldn't be surprised. But we remember that we are not alone. The world hated Jesus first, so therefore it's only natural that it will hate some of the things that we stand for. Remember that Jesus himself preached nothing but love and tried to draw people closer to his Father, to God, to Yahweh. But yet they hated him for it and so therefore crucified him. On a cross. So don't be surprised when suffering comes your way, but for us as a believer, it's how we respond to that suffering that is more important. And so there's three things. The next three points is how we shouldn't how we should respond and how we shouldn't respond to suffering. So the first point is don't be surprised. And as a result of that, the second point is found in verse 13 and 14. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Peter tells us that whenever we suffer, we should be glad, we should rejoice. Now, I don't know about you, but I certainly know in my own life, when suffering comes, regardless of whether it's an internal suffering or an external coming from the world, I don't feel like rejoicing. It's not a happy place to be. And we associate in this world rejoicing with happy. We rejoice at the marriage. We rejoice at the birth of a child. We rejoice at exam results. We rejoice at so many different occasions in our lives. But what about suffering? Do we rejoice when we suffer? It's usually the last thing that's in our mind. And sometimes when we suffer, we like nothing more than to sit down and have a good old moan. But Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 4, and I love this verse, Philippians chapter 4 verse 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say it, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say it, rejoice. We thought about this little verse last year when we worked our way through the book of Philippians. There are many times in our lives when we don't feel like rejoicing. But look at what Paul says. Rejoice in the Lord always. Not just when things are good, but when things are also not good. Rejoice in the Lord. So as believers, what do we rejoice in? Well, we rejoice in the fact that we are people of the resurrection. That we serve a risen saviour. That we worship a God of love who died for each and every one of us. And as the Christian church, we have every reason to rejoice. And we rejoice because we know that because of the forgiveness of sins... That our suffering, no matter how severe it is in this world, is only temporal. Because one day, that suffering will come to an end where we will rejoice in heaven with all the saints, with all the angels, with all the company of heaven, crying out those wonderful, wonderful words, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. 
We rejoice when we suffer because we are suffering for our faith. Now that doesn't mean that we rejoice when we do something bad. Peter says that in verse 15. If you suffer, it should not be because you're a murderer or you're a thief or you're any kind of criminal or even a meddler. What's he mean by that? Well, those are very obvious sins. You don't rejoice if you commit murder. You don't rejoice if you steal something. You don't rejoice if you're a criminal of any kind, regardless of how small or large we think the crime may be. And he says, or even as a meddler. In other words, a gossip. Someone who's a busybody, as the King James Version of the Bible puts it. Someone who, who, who likes to interfere and to make up stories and gossip and all those sorts of things. That's what he's meaning by meddler. By interfering in other people's lives in things which are no concern of our own. Peter says, don't suffer for those sorts of things. And if you do suffer for those sorts of things, then don't rejoice about it. So we shouldn't be happy if a murder takes place or if a, a, a theft takes place or we shouldn't rejoice because of any kind of, of criminal activity. We shouldn't even rejoice whenever we hear gossip. But Peter says we should rejoice if we suffer for our faith. So back to the question. If you were placed on trial, if I was placed on trial for being a Christian, would we be found guilty? If the answer is yes, then rejoice because we're suffering for the Lord. We're suffering for the King of Kings. The third thing we learn from this passage as a result of suffering is found in verse 15. Sorry, verse 16. Peter writes, However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. If you suffer for being a Christian, do not be ashamed of our suffering. Don't try to hide it, but use it as a testimony to talk about the glory of God and how God is working in our lives in the hope that it may bring others to him. It's not a oh, poor me scenario. It's not about trying to, to, to let, get other people to feel sorry for us. It's about drawing other people to us through the testimony that we have of God's love in our lives. We need to also remember the words of Jesus. I've shared with you before that some of my favourite passages in the scripture is the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6 and 7. Jesus talks about this point, about not being ashamed. Because he says from verse 10 to 12 of Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus is saying in this, be happy, rejoice. Don't be ashamed of the fact that you suffer because we bear the name of Christ. Because we are Christians. Do not be ashamed, Peter writes. But instead of being ashamed, he gives us the response. Do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. Draw other people to, yourself, to himself as you share your testimony in word and deed. History tells us that when Christians were being persecuted right across the Christian world in the early church by the Romans, that they often died singing hymns and with prayer upon their lips. Draw other people to themselves. Look at Christ hanging on the cross of Calvary, dying for your sin and for my sin. And what was one of his final words according to scripture? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. They weren't words of hatred 
They weren't words of discouragement. They weren't words of shame, but were words of love and of praise. Because God desires not the death of a sinner, but rather that we turn from our wickedness and live. So may our suffering draw other people to God. Then the fourth and final thing I want us to think about this morning in response to suffering is found in verse 19. So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. We must trust God when we suffer. It's so easy to forget about God when things are going well in our lives because we grow content and we can become a bit lethargic in our faith because everything's going along swimmingly. But then when we start to suffer, we often refocus our minds. And sometimes the point of suffering is to help us refocus, to help us to draw closer to God. But we must trust in God whenever we suffer. Because God knows the outcome. The battle is over. It is already won. And often what the enemy intends for evil, God turns it for good. Scripture tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 8, we read these words. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. When suffering comes, we often get afraid. That's only a natural response. But we need to remember what the writer of Deuteronomy says. That we're not to be afraid. We're not to be discouraged. And why? Because the Lord is with you. He has promised never to leave us nor forsake us. But more than that, the Lord himself actually goes before us. He's already there in the midst of the suffering. Even at times we struggle to find him in it. He is there because he is God. And he is omnipresent. He's in all places at all times. He transcends generations. He is the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. God is there for us and with us. But we need to fully trust him. Not just when we suffer, but at all times in our lives. We need to trust in God. The words of Peter commit to our faithful creator, and continue to do good. So in summary, four things that we learned from this passage this morning is that we shouldn't be surprised that when we suffer for being a Christian, that we should rejoice when we suffer for being a Christian, that we shouldn't be ashamed of suffering because we're Christians, and that we should trust in God when we suffer for our faith. We need to be living with faith every moment of every day. And should we remember nothing else, we need to remember this, that we are loved by God more than we can ever imagine. That suffering for Christ brings us closer to him because he also suffered. That we should never be ashamed of Jesus and we should commit our lives to him as our Lord and as our Saviour and place our trust in him. So let me encourage you today and this week, continue to live with faith, living in faith, serving Jesus, regardless of what circumstances are throwing at you. Never, ever stop believing. Never stop placing your trust in him. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the model that you give us. We thank you for these words of Peter And Lord, when we suffer, give us the grace to suffer wisely, to suffer well for being Christians. Help us to live our lives for you, that even in our suffering we may continue to point others to you. And help us to always, always trust you. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.